for me, nothing beats watching a fish eat, sneaking up on it, tossing that dry fly right in front of it, just perfect, and watching that fish come up and smack that dry fly like me smacking a plate of wings. In today's episode, I'm gonna walk you through the six steps that will help anybody succeed with dry flies. So let's say you pull up to the river, you get out of the truck, you walk on down, and you see this like 39 and 5 8 inch trout just rising like there's no tomorrow, just going to town on these bugs. And what's your natural reaction to that? Well, you're just gonna fuck it to the river, man! You wanna get there, you wanna start casting, you wanna get your flies in front of that fish. Well, don't. I'm gonna tell you why. Because you got to follow step number one, which is watch and wait. So what are you watching and waiting for? First thing you got to do is figure out what in the devil that 39 and 5 8 inch trout is eating. Okay? Because if it's snacking on PMDs and you throw a caddis at it, it's just going to laugh at you and leave. You don't want that, trust me. I've been there. When you get to the river, first thing you want to do is take a look around you. Look at what bugs, if any, are actually on the water. Do you even want to use dry flies in the first place? When you watch and wait, you're able to observe your surroundings and see what bugs might be hatching, how the fish are rising. That's going to tell you if you need a dry fly or an emerger, so you can plot exactly where you need to be and where your cast needs to be to give you the best chance of putting that fish in the net. Step number two is pick the right fly. There's two things you need to consider when picking the right fly. Do you need an emerger or a done? Without getting too into the weeds on this topic, emerging insects are exactly what they sound like. They are a life stage of an aquatic insect that is emerging from its egg or larval stage on the bottom of the river to go up and hatch into a winged adult up above the water surface. As they do that though, they're shooting up through the water column and they kind of get stuck in the surface film. This is a very thin layer right on top of the water where you see a lot of junk get stuck. The trout love them because they are a high calorie, easy meal that has a low chance of escaping. When a trout eats an emerger, it creates a very distinct rise form or that surface disturbance that we see when fish come up and jump to eat flies. When trout eat these emergers, you're going to just see their dorsal and tail fins break the surface. It's a very soft, subtle rise, and you don't see the splash, and you usually don't see the head of the trout break the surface either. Now, let's talk about the duns for a second. A dun is just the fully formed adult version of an aquatic insect. It's got its wings, it is ready to take off from the water and start doing whatever it is bugs do. When trout rise to eat duns, you'll generally see the trout's entire head break the surface, and these rises can be a lot splashier, a lot louder. They're not nearly as subtle and soft as a merger eats. So the first question when picking a dry fly out of your box is, should I use the dun or should I use the emerger? The second thing to consider when you're picking your dry fly is our right fly formula. The right fly formula is really simple. All it does is help remind you to pick the right fly based on three criteria, size, shape, and color. Those three criteria are listed in order of importance. If you can match those three things, you're probably gonna catch a fish. We actually have an entire video dedicated just to picking the right fly. So if you wanna learn more about our right fly formula and how to really match the hatch, we'll link that in the video description. While picking the right fly certainly is important, that's not going to matter if that fly is shooting across the top of the water at Mach 5 looking like it's riding a daggum jet ski, right? If that fly is just cruising on by, the fish are going to look at it and say, <laughs> yeah, I'm not eating that. That's a fake bug. That's why presentation is so important. The two things that I want you to remember about presentation are this. Number one, try to make that bug look as real as possible. You want that thing to be drifting in the same current that the fish are feeding in, looking like every other real bug that's on the water. Part of that is our second step here, which is eliminate the drag entirely. Drag is what happens when your fly and your leader are in different currents and the leader starts to pull on the fly and you get that little wake behind it. It does look like a mini jet ski sometimes. 
You don't want any drag. Real bugs don't have any drag, and if you want to catch fish or dry flies, you've got to eliminate that drag completely. Step number four, work close to far. When you're out there fishing dry flies, the last thing you want to do is try and cast to the fish all the way on the other side of the bank when you've got fish 10 feet in front of you rising. You want to work close to far because when the fly line lands on top of rising fish, that will put them down real quick. And if you're trying to wade to get closer to fish that are further away from you, you're also going to put down the fish that were closer to you when you waded right through their feeding lane. So remember, work close to far, fish to the fish that are rising in front of you, and then work out to the ones that are further away. Step number five, lead that fish. You want to lead the fish for two reasons. Number one, you want the fish to have the chance to see, recognize, and decide to rise and eat your dry fly. The second reason you want to lead that fish is as the fish rises up in the current to look at your dry fly, that current is actually going to push the fish back just a little bit. You need to lead that fish so it has time to not only look at your fly, but also move back just a tiny bit and smack it. Before I tell you what step number six is, I gotta tell you, we do have a bonus tip. You are not gonna wanna miss this. It is as satisfying as when you think you're down to the crumbs in your bag of Doritos, and you reach your hand in there, and you pull out the last, final, perfectly triangular chip. Step number six, correct positioning. Correct positioning comes down to getting yourself close enough to the fish where you feel like you are comfortable making a good cast to that fish, but you're not so close that you spook that fish. The reason that your position matters so much is that the right position is going to help you get that perfect drag-free drift and great presentation that we talked about earlier. This step is going to come with time as an angler. You're gonna find out that each approach, each position is gonna be different. Sometimes you're gonna be behind the fish, sometimes you might need to cast from its side. You might even have to cast from upstream of that fish to get it to eat. Success with dry flies really all goes back to a great presentation and eliminating drag as much as possible. And one of the biggest culprits of drag can actually be your tippet. It causes what we call micro drag. This drag is exactly what it sounds like. It is so small, you often can't see it, but trout can. If your tippet is just a little too thick and the fish keep coming up and looking at your fly and they seem real interested in it, but they keep refusing it, they swim away or they just go back down in the water column, chances are they're seeing a little bit of micro drag that's caused by your tippet. The solution to that is really simple. Just size your tippet down. Go from 4X to 5X or from 5X to 6X or if you are in Colorado, go from 6X to 8X because Let's be real, none of those Colorado trout are going to eat on 7X. Come on. The point with sizing down your tippet, again, is to perfect your presentation, get rid of drag, and present that dry fly in a way that looks as realistic as possible. You've listened to me yammer on long enough. Let's quit talking about this stuff and see what it looks like when we take our dry fly skills and put them into practice out on the river. First step to successful dry fly fishing, put on your tactical F1 fish binoculars. Okay, you're ready. So seriously, this hatch that's going on right now, we got out of the truck, I got down here to the water, and I about blew my first rule, right, which is watch and wait. Because there's three different, maybe even four different kinds of bugs hatching right now. There's midges, there's caddis, there's a PMD going on, and then there's like a bigger, almost like a Drake looking thing. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I know all of them, but I can recognize these bugs, right? Now it's a really good thing though, that I stopped and I watched and I waited before I started fishing. Cause I got down here to this little hole and the fish were rising on different bugs. There was one right at the head of the hole that was rising on emergers. And then a couple down here towards the tail where I'm standing, that we're eating the duns. So they're coming up and eating the adults. But with that said, I picked a little parachute PMD here because it seems to me like most of the fish are snacking on the bigger PMD. So that's what I'm gonna go with. So I decided to crouch down just because you don't wanna present like a big towering silhouette, right? This is part of the presentation thing. You wanna approach the fish in a way that you're not going to spook them. 
So I'm crouching down here to see if that'll make a difference. I'm gonna run this drift right here one more time. Okay, that's been a couple presentations and he doesn't want it. So I'm gonna go over to the left a little bit. And I can see a fish working up there on the left. So I am gonna scoot up just a bit. And I'm gonna try and land my cast right up there where that fish has been munching. So let's see if I can do it. Pro tip, don't catch the bushes, all right? And uh, this is proof that we still do it. One thing that never ends with your fly fishing uh, career is the bushes you catch. It's really hard to see the fly. It's kind of tricky light. So when that happens, uh, your best bet, is just kind of look where you think your fly should be. And if you see a rise, set the hook. <laughs> I've caught a lot of fish that way. It's a very common technique. You can't always see the fly. And I know that's something we hear from beginners a lot is, it's so hard to see my fly, my dry fly on the water. Well, you'll get used to it. For now, just look where you think that fly is and set the hook when you see a rise that's in the general area. As for this guy, he is either not eating PMDs or I I might have lined him or I'm not getting the right presentation because that's a couple of casts that he hasn't come up for. So I'm going to go back to watch and wait again for a second and see if I can tell that he's eating something else. So I watched and waited. He hasn't started rising again, so I probably like really spooked the fish, put him down, or he just quit eating. Either way, fish aren't rising in this pool anymore, so it's time to head upstream, go to the next hole. This is something that you'll run into with dry fly fishing as well, is sometimes they'll just stop in one little spot and just gotta move on. It's, it's kind of the name of the game a little bit. You could just sit here and wait for him to rise again, but I know there's a whole bunch of river in front of me and there's plenty of other bugs and plenty of other fish. So I'm just gonna, you know, take my lumps on this hole, realize that I probably screwed something up. I'm gonna move on to the next one and try and learn from that. All right, so we got up to this uh, different stretch of the river. We moved holes, right? And really flat water, really calm water. So it's very challenging in that presentation's gotta be just, just about perfect. And there's quite a few fish rising right now, so I'm gonna do my best to get my fly right in front of one of them. Again, I'm gonna go for the one that's closest to me. He's just kind of tucked up over that bank right over there. So we're gonna go take a gander at him and see uh, if we can catch him. So I just about started fishing when another fish came up and it's pretty clear that up here, they are not eating the PMDs. They are eating some of those little midges. So I'm downsizing my tippet and switching my fly. That's another reason why it's so important to watch and wait, even when you just change holes on the river. I mean, we're maybe 25-ish yards upstream from where we just were, and fish are keyed in on a completely different thing. So I'm gonna switch over to a different fly, see how that works, and Hopefully it's something I feel a little bit better about.
So I don't know if you had as much fun watching that <laughs> as I did doing it, but man, there are a few things I love more than catching fish on dry flies, and hopefully that illustrated why. Hopefully it also illustrated the points that we've discussed so far where we're talking about the importance of watching and waiting. I know I was using names of bugs like midges and drakes and PMDs and caddis, and remember, if you don't know all that, it's not super important yet. That's going to come with time. This goes back to our right fly formula where we talked about all you really need to be able to do is observe what the fish are eating, and then you can pick something that pretty closely matches that out of your box. That's what I did with these little midges that the fish are eating here. I picked the fly in my box that I thought was the best match, and it turned out it was. And the next video in this series is nymphs, so buckle up because it's about to get down and dirty.